In recent years, there has been a rise of technology featuring augmented reality and virtual reality. Augmented reality is taking a virtual world and combining it with the real world. Uses of this that many may be familiar with are in Pokemon Go, where players can make the Pokemon appear to be around their location, and the AR games on the Nintendo 3DS, which allow for playing games on augmented surfaces. Virtual reality is considered the bigger, more innovative technology, which usually involves a device holding a screen up near one's face, often giving a first-person experience. At Becker College, both of these technologies have started to be used for game projects, but their uses can extend even beyond that. Becker College is utilizing the rise of VR and AR technologies to teach students about a side of the industry that is relatively unknown, yet filled with potential. I've been working with AR technology for three years at Becker. We got the Google Tango three years ago, and that was the first AR project that we used. Well, so three years ago we had the Google Tango, and we used that first. That was the first project that we did, um, and then we've done we've done some messing around with just mobile phones, kind of like how Pokemon Snap has, um, you know, that that kind of AR technology, so just using mobile phones. And then um, we also got our hands on a kind of pre-Hololens. It was called the Meta Two, and um, we got we got one of those. It was like a prototype, so that was really cool. Um, and then this year we have the Hololens, and that was the first. Um, real big project that we did. The HoloLens is actually used for, uh, surgeons will use it for practice, so they'll have like a dummy that they're working with to uh, learn something new, and they'll have a, a layover in the HoloLens that they're seeing that will kind of guide them through the surgery before they actually start working on a real patient. So that's one of the like really important uses of AR. But then there's other kind of more arbitrary things like GPS, like some of the new smart cars will have kind of like AR stuff on the windshields. Um, so that's some of the, the uses for AR as opposed to VR, which is more fully immersive experiences where your vision is completely occluded and you're just kind of in this world. So that's, I think that works more for games and then AR works more for um, other types of simulations and training, um, but also for games. For the for classes, for, for the projects in class, we started with, um, with the Google Tango kind of doing like a hide and seek game where there was, there was Becker themed Friends like the Becker Hawk and um, and things and like different uh, versions of teachers, like cartoon versions of teachers, kind of like hiding around the design building, and you had to go find them, and then they'd give you quests. So that was the first thing we worked on with the Tango, um, and then this year with the Hololens, the first semester was a uh, a tour of the design building. So everybody kind of, if you put it on, you kind of have to walk around the design building, and you get these quests to go to different rooms. So somebody like potential student playing it would be able to uh, explore the building in this fun interactive kind of way. And then this year was a, a full-fledged game purely for entertainment called Jaywalker where you're in the middle of a virtual street and you're dodging cars. Which could actually work in VR also and they're, they're going to port it to the Vive maybe next semester. So that, that experience could work with VR or AR but we did it on the HoloLens and it was kind of fun. Working with AR well, with both AR and VR, the students working with AR and VR are exposed to challenges that they wouldn't normally be exposed to. So it kind of really pushes their, their limits as far as working in Unity or Unreal, whatever they happen to be using, and finding new ways to solve problems that they wouldn't encounter making just a regular 2D or 3D game. And oh. it's just super cool. <laughs> so how long have you been working with VR technology? Um, so probably about four years. Uh, I worked a little bit with it um, as an art project only, maybe about six years ago, but that was before the commercial release. Um, so commercially and for games specifically about four years. Um, so we're using the Vive, um, Oculus Rift, and technically, you know, AR, tech, AR VR technologies crossover. Um, so we're also using the HoloLens and so forth. So I think there's an advantage anytime that new technologies 
coming about before it becomes commercially successful uh, to have a chance to work with it because it's very difficult to integrate in the beginning. Um, so the, the, the advantage is that you have a chance to get a, a sort of a heads up on it um, and get to use it before everyone else does and things get ironed out. It can be actually interesting and challenging but also allow you to come up with creative ideas. So, so VR is often used, it really started with the military, um, so it's simulation based. And so anything that needs a simulation because the situation is too dangerous, um, or even if it just seems like it's dangerous. So another place that it's used besides the military is in situations where they're doing like therapy, um, and sometimes that's you know getting over fears. So even though there's not an actual danger, um, the fact that it can become realistic but also provide an actual safe ground is another good reason to use it. Um, as I mentioned before, art is another place where uh, VR is used, gaming obviously, but also education. And also tele, like teleconferencing, telecommunications, is a telepresence in general is a huge area that's often overlooked, but it's it's sort of where um, maybe why Facebook and so forth is interested in it because it's a huge business deal to have more to it than just you know a conference, a phone conference. Uh, this allows for more presence. So, so I've worked on a lot of education. Uh, products and applications and software with VR, um, a little bit with telepresence and a, a ton with um, just artistic experience with it. So. I think right now the biggest difference and the reason why you even see two different systems set up for it is with AR you've seen a, a tendency to be able to use that not being tethered. Um, which I think though is where everything is headed because that's an ideal obviously. Um, I also think the ideal is that you don't want to be stationary but right now for VR that means that we set up these sort of room scale situations and move all of the actual physical objects out of the way which is also not ideal. So I think that having that combination and the ability to, it's certainly easier to just turn off AR and make it VR so it makes more sense for it to become one unit and be able to focus on that. So I think they're going to merge back together. <laughs> into what we know as mixed reality, by the way. <laughs> so definitely the biggest issue is the fact that you're tethered. So right now, anything that requires you to have a giant cable leading from your head back to a computer is not a good situation and not ideal. Um, people talk about other issues like you know, frame rate and so forth, but the reality is those are being addressed and, and, and so far that's been, you know, it's become progressively better. Um, but I think that we need to work on the hardware aspect of it and I think that's also being addressed but it is certainly not at the commercial release and if we've, if we've looked at sort of the history of VR right now, it's taken, you know, four years to go from concept for commercial release to actual commercial release. We're going to see that as, I think we're going to see that as uh, we need more development time but it will eventually address that, which I think is a big issue. Um, processing, I think we already start to see in AR more than VR, so we've noticed things like the HoloLens being an independent device, um, which I think is important so that that processing power is more accessible. Price drop has already happened, will need to continue to happen to make it viable, um, and those are probably the biggest things. I think that even though it's a new and trending technology, being able to use it in a situation where it makes more sense than not using it is very important to us and in, for any sort of game design obviously. Um, so I think we're looking for those use cases and sometimes that does mean expanding slightly outside of say just games specifically. So we do look at educational or serious games um, and I think we're looking to broaden that spectrum as well as you know like exhibits or situations where it's an installation because right now perhaps having it at home and having it out in everyone's home isn't viable at the moment but there are all these other use cases to sort of introduce it more appropriately um, in museums and, and educational settings. Um, the other thing we've noticed is that um, even though people you know, hear the word VR and they're very interested. There hasn't actually been a lot of work to get people to understand it um, and to actually know what it's about. So we'll often find people in class even who have never actually used VR or if your only experience with VR is like the Google, you know, cardboard, then sometimes it's a negative influence. So I think another thing we're trying to do is make it accessible to the public. So we've spent a lot of time doing showcases and demo nights and, and expanding that way just to make it, you know, educate people. Some students at Becker College actually own their own VR technology, as well as work on VR and AR projects in their classes. I've owned VR for about like maybe two years now. I got it back in August before I came to the school. I played uh, Professor Derek Hoffman's bike simulator where you're going around um, slaying zombies and all that. I have played the hamster ball VR, which is very popular. There are plenty of VR games like meant to show you simulations, like showing you how to like do dishes, showing you how to do like 
normal house work around the house, you can do that. There's definitely a benefit because like in this school we are basically like learning as much as we can to get the best experience we can out in the real world and with technology as it is, VR is the future. Wearing the best technology out there. Try on PlayStation VR, trying out Vive, trying out Google VR, whatever. It all benefits. Because, like, if you want to get into the field and know what you want to do, VR is something you can do, and it's very beneficial. In the coming years, Becker College is working to expand even further with these technologies to give their students the best possible experiences, both in using and working with them.